I made mean, Patrick CC. Why didn't Chris Brown's career end? I'm assuming he's talking about the whole Rihanna incident, bro. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it. When discussing Chris Brown, it's impossible to forget the 2009 incident where he physically assaulted his girlfriend Rihanna, who, as we know, was and still is one of the most popular stars of the past decade. Some yep. of you from that moment on were never a fan of Chris Brown again. Yep. And while it did leave a stain on his reputation, being forever associated with this disgraceful incident basically didn't hurt his career at all. Today, Chris Brown has over 50 million monthly listeners, has more gold records than Elvis, and is still selling out stadiums all over the world. Just yep. last week, he posted on Instagram about how people still hate him for- Oh, I was just going to talk about this, bro. I was dead just going to talk about this. Um... He posted this pretty much you guys or not you guys people will praise you know what I'm saying and look at Blueface and Krishan's relationship and how they move and stuff but y'all still on this man's ass Chris Brown after uh that whole incident back in 2009 right for a mistake he made at 17 but Chris Brown has made a mistake almost every year for the past decade. He seemingly isn't a changed man. So why didn't his career end? Today, you will find out exactly why. Come on, Stay Patrick. <laughs> By early 2009, Chris and Rihanna were considered a music industry hitmaker power couple. Rihanna had two number one hits, SOS and Umbrella, along with a number of hits such as Ponder Replay, Unfaithful, Don't Stop the Music, Shut Up and Drive, Disturbia, which was actually written by Chris Brown, Take a Bow, and mm. many others. Chris also had two number one songs, his debut Run It and Kiss Kiss, along with other hits like Say Goodbye, Gimme That, Yo, Take You Down, With You, and Forever. They stagged, gang. Yo, mid-2000 music. I want to say early 2000 music. Beautiful, bro. Beautiful. Bunch of throwback bangers. Heading into the 51st annual Grammy Awards, they were both scheduled to perform separately, as well as receiving multiple nominations for various categories. Sheesh. However, these plans ended abruptly when media outlets reported that the couple would not be attending the red carpet, and their performances were canceled shortly afterward. Early Damn. that morning, Chris had been arrested following a domestic altercation in a rented Lamborghini that left Rihanna's face bloodied, bruised, and swollen. But to fully understand what occurred that night, we must backtrack when the couple initially began dating. Chris and Rihanna were not your typical teenage romance. They couldn't dine at restaurants or book hotel rooms without paparazzi flooding the parking lot. With so much power, influence, yep. and a lack of privacy at such a young age, things were bound to get ugly. Chris told Rihanna that he wanted to marry her. Before he proposed, he wanted to come A 17 gang? That's crazy. Clean and admit that he had slept with one of his female assistants. Rihanna was floored. She could no longer trust Chris for hiding this from her for so long, especially since Rihanna asked Chris years ago. Bro, I'm sorry, gang. You got Rihanna, bro. You had. You had Rihanna, bro. You had her. And you gonna cheat on her, bro? You gonna cheat on Rihanna? Assuming, assuming it happened when you guys were together. I mean, assuming, right? You cheated on Rihanna, bro. That tough could never be me. You're not saying. I don't trust hey. Chris for hiding this from me for so long, especially since Rihanna what? asked Chris years ago if he ever slept with this woman. My trust totally was lost with her. You know what I'm saying? She hated me. After that, I tried everything. I watched we this. Each other. She would hit me. I would hit her. And but it never was okay. There were actually two previous domestic abuse-related incidents before the Grammys. The first offense cited occurred in Europe about three months before his arrest. Chris and Rihanna were engaged in a verbal dispute when she slapped him and he responded by shoving her into a wall. The report also states that in January, Brown and Rihanna were vacationing in Barbados and got into an argument while they were riding around in a borrowed Range Rover. No injuries were reported, but Brown got out of the vehicle and smashed the driver and front passenger side windows. But on February 8th, it all reached a tipping point and it was about to get bad. Chris, who was 18 at the time, and Rihanna, who was 19, arrived at the executive Clive Davis's legendary pre-Grammy bash. The couple were approached by the woman Chris had slept with before his relationship with Rihanna, the woman who before. sparked trust issues between the two. Chris oh, claimed- okay, so it was before. I mean... Clive Davis's legendary pre-Grammy bash. The couple were approached by the woman Chris had slept with before his relationship with Rihanna. 
It happened before. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Maybe Rihanna knew the new shorty like really well, and that's why I fucked her up some more. I don't know, gang. If it happened before, what's going on? What can you do? The woman who sparked trust issues between the two. Chris claimed he didn't they know she would be cool. there, but Rihanna was upset nonetheless. She began crying before the ceremony started. However, as the night continued, she gradually got over it. They drank, laughed, and enjoyed their night before leaving the venue. Up until that point, everything was fine, as Rihanna explained. The couple had a blast that night. On the drive home, Rihanna discovered a lengthy text message on Chris's phone from the woman they had encountered earlier that night. Chris claimed he never saw the message, but Rihanna felt like she caught him in a lie, and he wouldn't tell the truth. She wouldn't drop the issue and couldn't accept that he could be lying to her. Rihanna felt like Chris's back was against the wall and it caused him to get enraged and become violent. Chris, on the other hand, offered a different story. Off top, she thought I was lying. She starts going off, she throws the phone, I hate you, whatever, whatever. She starts hitting me, we're in a new Lamborghini. You know, she's fighting me and I'm like, look, yeah, she, I'm telling you the truth, I swear to God. It. You know, I'm telling you the truth, stop it. So then she hits me a couple more times and I just kind of, I just... It doesn't go from translation to, let's sit down, I'm telling you the truth. It goes to, now I'm finna be, be mean and be evil. So then I remember she like tried to kick me. It's like her just being upset. But then I really hit her. Like I, like I with a closed fist, like I punched her. You know, and, and it uh, busted her lip. And when I saw it, I was in shock. Like, fuck, why did I hit her like that? So from there, she just spit in my face. Like, spit the blood in my face and I'm like, and it enraged me even more, like like it's a real on fight in a car. We driving in the street. So in a then car, I'm like, yo. Bro. Hey, y'all, we tripping. Like, what the f like, what are we doing? Chris says that he didn't start the verbal or physical fight, but he does admit that he retaliated violently and that was wrong. According to the detective's statement, Rihanna made frantic calls and texts to her staff after Chris allegedly threatened to assault her when they arrived home. The outreach only angered Brown more, and he continued his barrage of punches as the vehicle swerved. All Rihanna could think to herself was, when is it going to stop? Eventually, Chris pulled over. Rihanna ripped the keys out of the ignition and pretended to throw them out the window, forcing Chris to exit the vehicle. While searching for the keys, Rihanna yelled, help, he's trying to kill me. A neighbor heard Rihanna's screams and immediately dialed 911. Frustrated, Chris walked home while Rihanna remained there until authorities arrived. After their Grammys appearance was canceled, the public soon learned about the truth regarding what occurred earlier that day. Following the news leaking to the media publications, TMZ released a photo of Rihanna where she sustained visible injuries. Someone in the police department leaked the photo. Rihanna described this person as a very nasty woman who thought a check was more important than morals. If Chris's situation wasn't bad before, the visual representation of his actions made it significantly worse. He eventually turned himself into the authorities and was booked under suspicion of making criminal threats. It's important to keep in mind that we didn't truly hear Chris's side of the story until 2017, nearly 10 years later, because he chose to publicly admit his wrongdoings with this apology he uploaded to the internet. Hi, I'm Chris Brown. Since February, my attorney has advised me not to speak out, even though ever since the incident I wanted to publicly express my deepest regret and accept full responsibility. Although I would do some interviews and answer some questions in the future, I felt it was time that you heard directly from me that I am sorry. He carried that same sentiment to court as he pleaded guilty to felony assault. In August of 2009, Chris received five years of probation. He was ordered to attend one year of domestic violence counseling and undergo six months of community service. After the trial, Rihanna broke her silence. I fell in love with that person. That's embarrassing. That's embarrassing that that's the type of person that I fell in love with. All right. You fell in love with him. I mean, before all of this, didn't you know that he w he had two incidents? I think he's uh, Patrick said two incidents prior to um, before you about that pretty much of um, assaulting a female, right? Twice. So if you knew that, why didn't you take that to consideration? You know what I'm saying and if you didn't know that then that's fine too because you know what I'm saying not everybody exposes themselves to somebody and lets them know what they've been through and what they've done in the past good or bad honestly you know what I'm saying I don't know bro I don't know that's embarrassing that that's the type of person that I fell in love with so far in love so unconditional that I went back on average, I think That's it takes a woman seven times before she leaves. Eight or nine, actually. Nah. 
and ladies men too come on let's keep it 100 men go through this bullshit too yo if anybody lays a fucking hand on you right a finger on you you fucking leave okay i don't give a fuck how much you love that person i don't care what you guys been through what you guys got planned in the future if y'all engaged and you're waiting to get married if y'all man i don't give a fuck leave fucking leave bro leave i don't want and i don't want that to happen then chris publicly responded is it difficult for you to hear rihanna say those things it is it's real difficult it hurts but it's just it's just something that i have to be responsible for because i'm responsible for my actions he did the right thing by admitting his wrongdoings but he still lost sponsorships bookings and radio play despite the backlash he decided to release an album in 2009 graffiti which debuted at number seven on the billboard hot 200 and sold 102,000 copies in the first week this is still his worst performing album but it's also easily his worst sounding album at the time people thought his career was ruined but actually this was only a minor setback chris was about to dominate Frax. for the next decade and although he claimed he was going to change his actions that couldn't be further from the truth i have sought and i'm continuing to seek help to ensure that what occurred in february can never happen again and as i sit here today i can tell you that i will do everything in my power to make sure that it never happens again and i promise that <laughs> edits. W edits chris was never blackballed from the music industry just one year after pleading guilty he was booked to perform a michael jackson tribute at the 2010 bet awards Crazy. during the performance he famously began crying and fell to his knees while singing jackson's man in the mirror His breakdown sparked a positive reaction as viewers and celebrities alike praised his ability to be vulnerable while honoring his idol. This performance completely changed the public perception of him. Those yep. tears won over the hearts of his fans and haters. They thought everyone deserves a second chance, especially someone as talented as Chris Brown. Dead Coming off the positive press, Chris released another Bro. hit called Deuces. The three times platinum single was remixed by some of the biggest names in hip hop, including Drake. Good shit, bro. Remixed three fucking times. One song remixed three times is crazy. Drake, Kanye West, Andre 3000, and Rick Ross. Chris thought the world forgave him, and in February 2011, Rihanna's restraining order against Chris was eased as a judge allowed the two to have contact with each other. But the world didn't forget, which made him very angry. Have you been able to? How have you been able to? I've been that? focusing on his album, you know? I think this, this album is what... You know, I, I want people to hear and want people to really get into. So definitely this album is what I want them to talk about and not the <laughs> stuff that happened two years ago. After this agitated interview, Chris stormed off the Good Morning America set screaming down the hallway. He allegedly threw a chair at his dressing room window, which caused the glass to shatter hey, on the street below, ripped his shirt off, and taunted one of the producers before ultimately leaving the studio where he was photographed on the street after lashing out. Later that day, he posted a now-deleted tweet that read, I'm I didn't know that. I don't know he did all this shit, bro. On the street after lashing out. Later that day, he posted- Bro, can you really blame him, though? Like, he's out here trying to- Assuming he's out in the public, at least how it is nowadays. Somebody drops an album, you see them everywhere doing interviews and shit and, 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 and stuff like that. Assuming he was there to promote his album and talk about music and not the fucking, you know, the shit that happened. I don't blame him being mad and going crazy like that, bro. Because it's like, this man's trying to move on, but motherfuckers is still on his ass about it. Only ...leaving the studio where he was photographed on the street after lashing out. Later that day, he posted a now-deleted tweet that read, I'm so over people bringing this past shit up, yet we praise Charlie Sheen and other celebs for their bullshit. Chris appeared in an interview days later and apologized for his outburst. Luckily for Chris... He found one woman who was there for him during all the chaos, Karuchi Tran. They had been private about their relationship, but were seen together a lot in early 2011 until the pair ultimately decided to make their relationship officially public. Chris then dropped his 2011 album, Fame, which stood for Forgiving All My Enemies. The album was a major success, with hit singles like Look At Me Now and Yeah Times 3. Chris was able to sell 270,000 copies Sheesh. first week and earned his first number one album. The next year, he dropped Fortune, nice. which would be his second number one album. Back-to-back -back number ones proved that Chris Brown's music was good enough to look beyond his demons. It also helped that every major artist in the industry was totally fine with working with him, but he was about to get the biggest cosign that would fundamentally restore his reputation that would come from rihanna 
Chris appeared on the remix of Rihanna's song, Birthday Cake. In return, Rihanna featured on Turn Up The Music. The records were very controversial due to their past. Rihanna said she didn't understand the controversy. She didn't see how people could think it was a bad thing. Rihanna's defense over the music- Bro, you got, you, got the, you got the woman. You got the person who went through the bullshit because of Chris Brown, right? You got that person coming out and pretty much like, you know what I'm saying? Just accepting him. Accepting the apology. Pretty much. If, he, if, if she's out here dropping music after the incident. You know what I'm saying? But you still got those fucking people, bro. Who are on his ass about it. You know what I'm saying? Like. I, I don't know, bro. Because literally, it's like. It's like. How much of like, why the fuck do you care? Like, let's let's keep it real. Why the fuck do you care that this man did this to Rihanna? Granted, it's serious and I understand that. But a few years later, she's out here pretty much saying, it's in the past. Let me drop, what was it, two? A song or two with him featured in it. Let me just drop that for the, for the world. That kind, to me, that kind of shows that she's over the situation. And she accepts his apology. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was about to get the biggest cosign that would fundamentally restore his reputation. That would come from Rihanna. Chris appeared on the remix of Rihanna's song, Birthday Cake. In return, Rihanna featured on Turn Up The Music. The records were very controversial due to their past. Rihanna said she didn't understand the controversy. She didn't see how people could think it was a bad thing. Rihanna's right. defense over the music made it clear that she had forgiven Chris, yeah. but she took it a step further when she went on Oprah to publicly speak on their relationship. He made that mistake because he needed help. And like, who's gonna help him? Mm. Nobody's gonna say he needs help. Mm -hmm. Everybody's gonna say he's he's a monster mm -hmm. with, without looking at the source. And yeah. I was more concerned about him. Yeah, his well-being, bro. God forbid this man could have just went more downhill than what he had gone through. And again, God forbid starts hurting himself or this this and this, anything anything gets into drinking drugs like anything right but no the person who dealt with this shit because of him is out here accepting his apology willing to move on from the situation still looking out for his well-being but everybody else oh fuck that guy he's an abusive this come on bro you know what i'm saying he needs help Mm -hmm. Everybody's gonna say he's he's a monster mm -hmm. with, without looking at the source. And yeah. I was more concerned about him. That is really powerful. Well, have you forgiven him? I have forgiven him. The person who was undoubtedly the victim in the situation Look has that. forgiven the assailant. That, that was enough for fans to fully embrace Chris again. You know, man, like I said, man, people make mistakes. And if Rihanna's willing to forgive Chris, then everybody else needs to mind their business and forgive simple bro simple she got none to do with you you don't want to listen to her shit cool who gives a fuck i'm pretty sure he don't care you know what i'm saying pretty sure rihanna don't give a fuck either but the person willing to come out and accept up pretty much accept his apologies and still look out for his well-being bro that shit says a lot especially for rihanna bro that says a lot about her her character dead ass and if rihanna's willing to forgive Chris, and everybody else need to mind their business and forgive Chris too. It seemed ludicrous for fans to hold you this know. over Chris's head when Rihanna herself felt compassion for him. Chris and Carucci ended up splitting up during this time. Chris shared his struggles with loving two women at the same time. You know, when you share history with somebody, then you tend to fall in love with somebody else. It's kind of difficult. You know what I'm saying? Rihanna and Chris began dating again. He made a mistake and he's paid his dues, Rihanna says. Because of her support and their rekindled relationship, his reputation to the public was fully restored. See, I didn't know they got back together. I didn't know that. And for the next 10 years, he would have a wildly successful career despite a long list of criminal charges. In January of 2013, Chris got into a verbal altercation with Frank Ocean over a parking space, calling him a homophobic slur and then punched him in the face while two of Brown's friends jumped in. Chris Bro. was captured in public wearing a hard cast on his right hand days later with no explanation for his injury. Despite clearly being assaulted, Frank ultimately chose to not press charges. Later on in 2013, Brown was arrested for felony assault in Washington, D.C., where he and his bodyguard, Christopher Hollisey, were involved in a physical altercation with two men outside of the W Hotel. 
jail. Keep in mind, he was still on probation from the 2009 Rihanna assault. He would plead guilty Damn. to this assault in 2014. One Damn. month later, he was booted from a rehab facility after smashing his mother's car window during a family session. In early 2014, a judge ordered Chris Brown to stay another two months in a Malibu rehab, where doctors blamed the R&B singer's violent past on previously undiagnosed PTSD and bipolar disorder. They said he was responding to the treatment well. In May of 2014, Chris Brown was ordered to spend 131 days in Los Angeles County Jail by a superior court judge in California after the singer admitted to violating the terms of his probation, but he was released after 60 days. Then he released his album X, which sold 146,000 copies first week and debuted number two on the Billboard Hot 100. In January of 2015, his probation was revoked after he left the Los Angeles County area to host a private party that led to five people getting shot. Him and Carucci what finally break up for fuck? good in 2015 when she found out that Chris impregnated another woman. In May of this motherfucker boy, this man just. 2015, a man alleged that Chris hit him after an argument over a basketball game at the Palms Casino Resort, but Chris denied and the alleged victim didn't press charges. He dropped his 2015 album Royalty, selling 184,000 units first week and debuted number three on the Billboard Hot 200. In January 2016, Brown was investigated by the police in Los Angeles after a woman alleged that he beat her and stole her cell phone during a party at the Palms Casino Resort. He was not charged. In June of 2016, he sued by alleged was not charged his ex-manager mike g and claimed that chris brown brutally attacked him punching him four times in the face and neck this matter was settled out of court in 2019. in august 2016 a woman called the police and claimed that chris threatened her with a gun outside of his home he repeatedly proclaimed his innocence and was eventually arrested and later released from jail on a two hundred fifty thousand dollar bail but he sued the woman for defamation and won through incriminating text messages the woman told her friend don't you know this freak chris brown is kicking me out of his house because i called his friend's jewelry fake can you come get me my uber is messing up if not i'm going to set him up and call the cops and say that he tried to shoot me and that will teach him a lesson i'm going to set him up and call the cops and say Fucking that he tried to shoot stupid. me and that will teach him a lesson i'm going to set his ass up him winning this suit is huge because it started to put into question how many times he could have been falsely accused yeah. because of his status the fuck? because of his past his character continued to be defaced by allegations highlighted by the media as many of his crimes were dropped due to people not pressing charges or lack of evidence in april of 2017 tampa police said brown allegedly sucker punched a 28 year old club promoter during a paid appearance the charges were dropped due to insignificant evidence his ex carucci filed a five-year restraining order against chris and won Tran claimed that after the couple broke up, Brown demanded that she return diamond rings and other gifts that she had received during their relationship. When she refused, Brown reportedly texted her, I'm not being nice to you no more. If I see you out in public again, and I'm there, I will make you hate me even more. Don't be anywhere I'm out in public. I'm nah, gang. What the fuck? <sighs> Bro, I get, I, like, I get you bought them something. But it's like, bro, it's a gift. You can't fucking take gifts back. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to sit here and ask everybody, oh, give me, give me this. I got it for you. I need that back. That, you look weird doing that shit, bro. What the fuck? Like, huh? And then you don't send a text like this, bro? Look again, and I'm there. I will Bruh. make you hate me even more. Don't be anywhere I'm out in public. I'm going to ban you from all events. In another text, he allegedly wrote, Bitch, I will beat the shit out of you, and I promise you I will make your life hell. Bruh. In February, Tran claimed this in a sworn man. statement that Brown had previously punched me in my stomach twice and pushed me down the stairs. In separate reports, Chris allegedly threatened to kill her. In January 2019, authorities in Paris detained Chris, his bodyguard, and a friend on potential charges of aggravated and drug infractions. A woman filed a complaint with the police alleging she was assaulted at his suite at the Mandarin Oriental Hotel. Chris and his associates were released from custody without charge just two days later. Paris authorities kept the investigation open and Chris retaliated by following a defamation lawsuit against the woman. In the summer of 2019, Chris dropped his ninth studio album, Indigo. His criminal past seemingly once again had no effect on his commercial sales as Indigo debuted at number one on the US Billboard 200, making it his third number one album. I stopped in 2019, Jeez. but every year he seems to have a major allegation or arrest. Ultimately, Chris complaining about being tired of this narrative of him being an abuser or violent man is fully self-inflicted. Every six months to a year, there's a new story about him punching- See, now, because I didn't know any of this, honestly. So now for him to drop this uh, post right here, 
and people are calling him abuser and shit. I mean, bro, it's like every fucking every year you have something, bro. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, can you really blame the people? But also, going back to the Rihanna thing, before Rihanna, you know what I'm saying? It was I, apparently it was two, one or two different incidents that made him seem abusive, right? Um. I don't know, bro. Like, I hope he's out here getting help. You know what I'm saying? Because what the fuck? Action or arrest. Ultimately, Chris complaining about being tired of this narrative of him being an abuser or violent man is fully self-inflicted. Every six months to a year, there's a new story about him punching someone or being violent towards someone. So is this narrative really about the Rihanna incident or repeated behavior? And for him to... Yeah. And if... All right. And if, that, if that's the case, if people are going to come at him for anything make generalize the statement of him being abusive don't be like oh you're abusive because of rihanna this this is rihanna 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 don't bring her up anymore bro because look that shit happened years ago right it happened 2009 look how like every every year it's something you know what i'm saying complaint seems odd because his career has never been held up he's never fallen off and he's never been blackballed three number one albums 114 songs on the billboard hot 100 11 top 10 hits and nearly 200 million records sold most people choose to look the other way regarding his legal issues because they love his music so much most people are separating the art from the artist when it comes to chris brown most people don't care about his violent history so if you're a person who hates cancel culture you look at Chris Brown as a success story. For everyone else, I guess you're just hoping it doesn't get worse. One thing Chris Brown is right about is people tuning in to see Blueface and Krishan yeah. beat the snot out of each other yeah. in front of the world. Yeah. And that's not okay. But yeah. you can hear all about that in this video. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, bro? Shit crazy, man. Um, all right, that statement he made, separate the artist with the music. Shout out to the people who can do that. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like somebody can have good music, but they can be a piece of shit person. Let, 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 let's be real. It's possible, right? Um, also, it's like, all right, it's like. Uh, I don't even know who to use, honestly. All right, it's, it's like because it's more recent that I know of Kanye West and uh, the, his Yeezy shoes, right? Been going through some shit a couple of years, too, but like it hit heavy last year, right? <coughs> he was making these uh comments and shit uh people are trying to say oh fuck kanye i'm gonna burn my yeezys this is and that bro separate the person from the art from the music from the items you know what i'm saying it's like if you got yeezys and you spent i think retail they go for 230 or even more i don't know or if you're buying from a fucking reseller you're already paying three four hundred dollars you're gonna burn your, you're gonna burn them shits because of the backlash he's going through and what he said. You know what I'm saying? You're literally gonna sit there and and, and waste three, four, five hundred dollars burning a shoe because it's Kanye's. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Sometimes I just feel like you gotta separate the artist from the music, the art, the and anything else, bro. Honestly, because it's like if it's a if it's a product you like if it's something you like but it's from a person you don't like it's like how 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 you gonna do that you know what i'm saying i don't know bro i don't know <clears throat> uh that whole abusive every year type of shit yeah this man need a he need to find some help bro if he's not finding it you know what i'm saying because like that that's that's trash bro I think for music musicians, it's a lot easier to separate the art from the artist. YouTubers who get canceled, are they really making art? That's true. That's true. 100% that's true. YouTubers, are they really making art? I mean, if you fuck with their shit, a video is art, you know what I'm saying? Some people may agree or disagree, but any type of content is different art. <laughs> Can we appreciate this for doing actual research on these topics? Thank you for bringing up his constant string of mistakes. Everyone thinks it was just the Rihanna incident. Fag, bro. See, after, listen, for me, the Rihanna situation, it was terrible. But drop that shit, bro. Stop. Don't do. Why bring it up in 2023? When he has a list after the Rihanna shit of a bunch of shit he's been uh, doing or allegedly did, right? Focus on that shit. That whole Rihanna shit is dead, bro. 
that shit is dead. They squashed they shit. They dated again. I don't know how long <clears throat> after the incident. They're cool, bro. Dead that shit. No fucking cap. I don't know why people are still bringing that shit up on him, bro. And literally, if what Patrick said is 100% true, he had two incidents before Rihanna. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, bro. Just that. I feel. I just feel like that whole Rihanna shit just dead that shit, bro. Cause that they literally apologized to each other. They accepted it. They're cool now. That shit's dead, bro. That shit's fucking dead. If y'all want to bring up anything dead ass, bring the 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 fucking the the shit he's doing now, bro. Honestly, I think he's made it this far because of his music. A good number of artists today done worse, but their music and labels sweep everything else under the rug. <laughs> oh man. Like how much you interact with your community is dope. Shout out Patrick, bro. I really fuck with his videos, man. So yeah, again, the whole Rihanna incident, everybody knows that. Uh, moving forward, I do remember the the allegations of I think it was in Paris. Yeah, this right here. This I remember being uh reading about it. Anything else before or after that in between? I didn't know, bro. I did not know. Listen, let me know what you guys thought. That's my reaction. If y'all enjoyed, give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't, and I'm out.